Hi everyone, this is the Word document resume demo and this is going to be the resume that we're going to read for now. So I already actually took out all the italics to make it a little bit easier for everyone to read as I kind of go in through and edit. One of the first things I just want to say is if you're starting from scratch, what I'd actually recommend doing is going to Microsoft Office and going to new. And when you get here, usually most people just go to blank document. I will not lie. I do the same thing. Um, when you do that, it goes into double space and it goes into um, eight point spacing after and before each line. So what you actually wanna do is actually go to single space blank. You won't actually have any of those problems at all if you do that. So that's like if you're starting from scratch, but as we talked about, Joe Groundhog here is starting with an unformatted kind of here and there resume. And I will just go over most of the simple basics, um, things that we highly recommend. So first for the heading for your name, um, you can actually have that in a bigger font than everything else. But after that, all of your additional fonts, so like your headline and the rest of the body of your resume should all be the same font. So here we have it on Calibri 11. And then for your headline, city and state. So this person, Joe over here did asterisks. What we recommend doing is doing vertical lines. Um, we call them pipe bars, vertical lines, whatever you wanna call them. Um, it is the line that is right above your enter key, and you just have to press shift with that key, and then you'll be able to get the vertical. Um, next is hyperlinks. So if you wanted to, let's first do that LinkedIn one because it's a lot simpler. So if you right click, go into link, and then here you go. Oh, this is actually in default of e email. Here, www is for the address and everything there, um, but the text and display won't have that. One of the things I wanna talk about too is that with LinkedIn, you can use a personalized URL. So for example, mine is, um, mine is linkedin.com slash min Christina Wynn. So it's a lot easier as opposed to having the default, which would have probably been like min dash Christina dash Wynn dash four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, to make it a little bit simpler on yourself, you should do the personalized one. And then I'll do the same thing for the hyperlink for your email. Um, you can do control K or you can just right click and do hyperlink. I just like doing the shortcut. Same thing here, email address. So it'll default to mail to. So when anybody who ever clicks it, it will just go straight to whatever their default is on their computer and it'll be able to email you. Christina, we go back to the LinkedIn and right click on that to edit. So see where it says text to display? If you just make that LinkedIn, then it'll just say LinkedIn at the top. Yeah, and so if anybody clicks on that, then they'll go to your LinkedIn. So see how much cleaner that looks just to, to have it as hyperlinks. And if, um, and if you send this as a Word document through email or something like that, someone will be able to click right there. Otherwise, um, they'll, uh, they'll uh, you'll be able to include your LinkedIn in the application, so, okay. And then, no, you're fine. And then if you email it, um, we usually recommend sending a resume via email as a PDF to make sure it keeps all your formatting the same. And if you make sure that your hyperlinks are in Word when you convert, it'll also convert into PDF. So you'll be good to go. All right, uh, next is the insert line, my favorite. So when we're trying to separate the header from the rest of the body of your section, the reason that we use lines is help to differentiate it and for a recruiter when they look at it to look at it really quickly. Um, a lot of people will insert line. Really all you have to do is just highlight the text that you want, go to border and this line is already here, go to bottom border and we'll add your line for you. Um, and that's usually the default I have right here. So then it, you can differentiate between your text and your header, which is really helpful. And if you try to draw the line and you know how terrible that is. It doesn't stay aligned to the text and everything. This is so, so, so much easier. Mm -hmm. um, next is bullet points. And so right here for your skills, it's a little bit hard to read because everything's already flushed to the left. So if you highlight the text that you want, um, you can do it two ways right here. And then there's a pop-up. You can click on bullet, click there. I'll have your bullet points. A lot of people might try to be fancy and they'll use check marks or they use the arrows. I will tell you the truth. It's really distracting. <laughs> um, I would just go with this simple circle. That's what most people expect. And it's pretty standard. And then the same thing here. So this person put actually three different skills into one line, probably because they're trying to save space. Um, so what I would do is obviously separate those out. 
And then if you want to put this in half over here, and when you put it in columns, it helps give some symmetry to your resume. So as opposed to having everything that's like left heavy, you're also having it on the right side. So for that, you're just gonna highlight the text that you want. You're gonna go to layout and go to columns. And I usually like to do a default of two columns. That's just my personal preference. And I think it's just easier that way most of the time as opposed to doing three. Um, so that's the default for that one for the bullet points as well as the columns. It just also makes it you know, a lot cleaner on your resume to see kind of information on both ends. Next is I wanted to talk about bullets and italics. So like Shannon said, it's a lot about style. Um, so usually what I do is for bachelors of arts, I'll uh, bold it and italicize. And then for University of Dallas, I'll bold that information. Um, because usually most people, if you're at like a big name company or at a university, they want to know where you're actually doing that experience. Um, real quick too, I'll go ahead and make this into bullet. So now you can read easily what the GPA was, study abroad, memberships, things like that. And here's the one I get questions about all the time. If you want information to be flush right, you do not need to do tables. A lot of people will do tables because they just don't know how to flush all the way to the right. So or what I recommend space doing- bar, Space bar the whole thing over. Yeah, over. they'll space bar, they'll tab, they'll stay. I mean, they, they do everything. So what I recommend doing is, I'm gonna cut this real fast. If you wanna make anything that's flushed right, all you have to do is click on the right, double click on the line that you want, and then paste, and that's it. <laughs> um, the other thing you could do is if you go all the way to the right, you can just type in what you want to. So either way, it's perfectly fine. But that's, I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, it's so simple. You just click, double click on the right, it'll flush right everything for you. Um, okay, the next thing is, so for example, if you have this and you're just typing it really quickly, and maybe instead of having it um, so we'll go ahead and insert the line again, like the border. And you see how we have education as the first letter of capitalized, work experience as first letter capitalized. Um, if you want to change it really quickly without having to type, you can go over here to the toolbar and it's the uppercase A, the lowercase A, this is change case. And what you can do is you can change this to whatever you want. So if you want it all uppercase, so no, in all caps, you can do it really easily. If you want to capitalize each word, you can do that as well. So that just keeps consistency. So some students like to have everything in all caps. Some students like to capitalize each word. I would just say pick one and you'll be fine. And the last two things I wanted to talk about were just some basics. So it's like Shannon said about margins. Our default is usually 0.5 all the way around. This is what this resume is on because this person has a lot of experience. If you don't have that much experience, you can go ahead and make it to a one, or like you can do top one and then left and right on 0.75. Just do whatever you think is consistent. That's what's great about the resume is that it's flexible in making it look like you might have a lot of experience when you don't. And then the last thing is just spacing. So if you actually did the default like I did, and I just go to blank page or blank document, um, and you need to change your spaces. You can always go to paragraph here, change it to instead this instead of multiple, it'll be single, and then make this on zero and zero. And then that would make sure that all of your spaces are correct and there's nothing too crazy. Some students, what they like to do, as I've seen before, is they'll put all their fonts on like a 10, and then they'll put like spaces before and after. So it looks like their resume has more content than what it is. Um, guys, you can do that, but really just, I'll just edit the font and edit the spacing as you see fit. But most of the time, just do the single space. Don't do anything fancy. You don't need to go crazy or anything with all of that. So that's all the stuff I would have to say that's in Microsoft. Those are the typical things that we get a lot of the time. And the reasons we do this is obviously just because we know what recruiters like um, in the sense of when they're looking at a resume and what the information's there. This is an easy way for you to be able to see balance. They can get to the information they want really quickly. Um, and it's like Shannon said, most of them actually just go to skills first, see if you have what's necessary, and then look at your experience to see if they have, if they, you have evidence to back up your statement of your skill section. So you just want to make sure that you do that. But these are the simple tips that we have.